Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ in your mercy. Cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, the mercy of the Holy One, and the Spirit of the Living God be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save 
safe, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice of from the bright cloud declaring Jesus your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the 24th chapter of Exodus, um, verses 8 through 11. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. Also they beheld God, and they ate and drank the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th and 17th chapters. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, 
Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they appeared to them, Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our Gospel reading, Peter says, it is good to be here, and I would echo his words. It is good to be here with you this morning at St. Luke's, both here in the sanctuary and for those of you who are joining us online. As Mark said, my name is Betsy Hoyam, and I currently serve as a chaplain at North Memorial Hospital. Prior to that, I was a pastor at a church in Roseville, and we partnered with you here at St. Luke's for the New York mission trip about four years ago. It was pre-pandemic, if you can remember back that far. And I remember being here for the pre-trip overnight retreat, sleeping in the fellowship hall, and getting to know many of the youth and adult leaders from this congregation as we traveled together. The next summer, we are going to go to Appalachia, which I understand is a St. Luke's tradition, but with the pandemic, that trip was canceled. And instead, we had the opportunity to partner with you to serve helping a small business in South Minneapolis and a homeowner in North Minneapolis. I've also had the chance to worship with you on a Sunday morning, only it wasn't here in the sanctuary, it was outside in the parking lot. So I look forward to seeing a few familiar faces here today. Now I understand that you are immersed in the Gospel of Matthew, and Jesus' ministry is developing. He is getting to know the disciples, and they are preaching and teaching as they travel throughout the area. Last week, you heard Pastor Rob preach about several different parables, and now today, we get this story of the transfiguration where they are going up the mountain. But there's a little bit of backstory to fill in since last week's text. Jesus has said to the disciples, who do people say that I am? And Peter gave the right answer. He said, you are the Messiah. Peter and the other disciples are beginning to get a glimpse of who this Jesus is. But then Jesus starts to tell them about what is going to happen, how he is going to die and rise again. And they are not ready to hear this. 
And Peter says, no, this is not going to happen to you. I'm going to protect you. This can't happen. And Jesus rebukes him, saying, get behind me, Satan. So all of these things have transpired before we get to the scene where they are going to trek up the mountain. This isn't all 12 disciples, just a small group of them, Peter, James, and John, along with Jesus. And they know the background of their faith and the major figures in that faith. And I'm sure they might have been thinking about that as they walked and talked and laughed and told stories. They knew the story of Moses who led the people for 40 years in the desert as they were looking for the promised land, of how God came to Moses and the people during the day in a pillar of cloud and at night in a pillar of fire, and how in a dramatic thunderstorm, Moses on the mountain receives the Ten Commandments from God. They also know about Elijah, probably one of the best known of the prophets. And as a prophet, sometimes he was not liked for the things that he was telling the people. Elijah did not hear God in a booming voice on a mountaintop, but instead he heard God in a very small voice, much the way that we might hear God speaking to us in soft whispers or through the words of another person. Elijah might be best known for his dramatic leaving of this world. He did not die, but he rode off into heaven in a fiery chariot. And that is the reason that the people were still waiting for the return of Elijah. All of these things might have been going through their minds as they were trekking up that mountain. And on this day, they were about to encounter one of the most amazing experiences they have ever had, a mountaintop experience. As you know, we too sometimes have mountaintop experiences, but not everything is a mountaintop experience. There are also those mundane activities of our day-to-day -day lives. When we had the opportunity to travel to New York with the youth, we were excited about things like the bright lights of Broadway and getting to see the Statue of Liberty from a boat tour in the New York Harbor, visiting the 9-11 Memorial and Museum and remembering that tragedy, exploring places like Chinatown and Central Park, getting to know kids at two churches where we led vacation Bible school. For most of the group, it was the first opportunity to go to this city of millions and millions of people. And yet, there were challenges too. All the logistics of travel and being on the very crowded subways with our luggage, the heat of a summer day and no air conditioning, plans that had to be adapted and changed as we went, having to walk six blocks to another building to be able to take a shower, and then afterward being so sweaty you wondered why you had taken a shower. <laughs> These are the day-to-day -day experiences that we all have. And yet as we look back on something like a big trip, what we remember are the high points. Those are the things we take pictures of and tell stories about and show to our friends. And I'm sure that is what the disciples experienced that day. They probably had sore feet. They might have been tired as they were hiking to the mountaintop. But as they got to the top, they saw something amazing. Standing there with Jesus was Moses and Elijah, these great figures of the faith. They knew that Jesus was someone special, but seeing him together with Moses and Elijah must have confirmed what they had been suspecting. And it is Peter, ever practical Peter. He's one of my favorite disciples because he's always very literal and he speaks for us as humans. He says, it is good to be here. 
Of course it is. They are feeling like everything is right with the world, and there is Jesus with these two great figures. He goes on to say, Let me build three houses or tents, dwelling places, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He would love to stay there in that moment. And then there is more. Out of this cloud comes a voice saying, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And this is so amazing that they are overwhelmed with awe and wonder and amazement, and they fall to the ground. That is all they can take in. And then it is Jesus who reaches out, lays a hand on their shoulders, and says, Get up, do not be afraid. And there, it is just Jesus alone. A familiar touch, a familiar voice. <laughs> Jesus as a human who is one of them. Something that they can grasp. They have just gotten a glimpse of this incredible glory of God. And yet it is the everyday, the touch, the voice that they know that has a calming effect on them. As I mentioned, I am currently serving as a hospital chaplain, and there we have the chance to walk with many people in all kinds of different situations. Many times it is an end-of-life situation or a crisis that people did not expect to find themselves in. Just before Christmas, I was working with a family. The mom and grandma was in her 90s, and she was nearing the end of her life. I was gathered in her room with her three daughters, and their mom had not awoken at all that day, even when they had touched her or spoken to her. There was no recognition or anything that their mom did to show them that she heard them. So we gathered around the bed to pray, and I began by reading a familiar scripture from John chapter 14. Words that I have read many times. In my Father's house are many rooms, and I go to prepare a way for you. If it were not so, would I have said that I go? And if I go, I will come back and take you to me. As I was reading, their mom stirred, and she started to say something. And we were all very quiet as we listened for what she was about to say. And she said, it is very beautiful here. And we knew she was not talking about the hospital room where she was laying, and we were all standing. But she had this serene look on her face about how beautiful it was. We were in her presence, and yet she wasn't fully there with us. She was in another place, seeing something wonderful and amazing and glorious. And we continued on with our prayer. And in the next few days, as the daughter spent their last few hours with their mom, she talked about people who had died decades earlier. And she talked about them in the present tense. She had had an experience, much like I believe Peter and James and John had on that mountain, of seeing, of getting a glimpse of God's glory, of what it means that when God makes promises to us in baptism, that we are his child, that he will always be with us, that he will never abandon us, that he is with us here and now and for all of eternity. This is not a finite promise. This is both the now and the not yet. The disciples got a glimpse of this. The woman I was with got a glimpse of this. We too sometimes get these glimpses of God's glory and what is to come. And they are reminders that God is here with us. 
right now and walking with us day to day. Those words spoken to us in baptism. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are each named and claimed a child of God. Just like the words that God spoke to Jesus on that mountain, this is my Son, the Beloved, with him I am well pleased. And as you go from here today and as you go about your week, I want you to remember and cling to those words that God is not just saying to Jesus, God is saying to you, you are my child, you are beloved, and with you I am well pleased. This is the promise that God makes to each and every one of us, both now and forever. Amen. Please join me with the words of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven. He is the Lord of the Lord, 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 He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by the light of Christ, who has been made known to the nations, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of glory and grace, you call us to wait upon your name. Give your church on earth the strength and patience to be the people you would have us be. Lord, in your mercy. You created mountains and hills, caverns and valleys to help, help us to be good stewards 
of the heights and the depths of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up leaders in this day with wisdom like Moses, so that all your know will praise, will, will peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Provide us with mercy and love through your beloved Son. Shine the light of his love to heal the sick, feed the hungry, and comfort the grieving. Be with all who suffer, especially today those in Turkey and Syria as they recover from the earthquake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up your children and counsel us not to be afraid. Help this community of faith to be fearless in proclaiming the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, keep us in your care until you gather us with all the saints from every time and place in the company of our sovereign God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Radiant God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of one who has made his dwelling among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. For all who are gathered, let us take a moment to welcome everybody with a wave of peace. For those online, please share a word of peace in the comment or chat. Most of all, as you go out into the world, may we greet others as people of peace. For those of you who are joining us online, if you haven't had an opportunity to get bread or crackers and wine or juice so that you may participate in this meal as well, this would be a good time to do so. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift, lift them to the, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. And praise. It, it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, in the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh. You have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you joining us online, hear these words. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come, for all is now prepared. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his peace. Amen. Amen. May the eternal light of God guide you in the way of peace through the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.